Thank you. Good morning, uh, everybody. Um, the topic of my presentation uh, will be the environmental priorities of uh, the European ports. But before going to my presentation, let me say a few words about my organization. The European Seaports Organization is the voice of the European ports, the European port authorities and port associations in Brussels. It represents the interests of the European port industry. And it operates not only as an interest group, uh, voicing the views of the ports to the European institutions in Brussels, but also as a knowledge uh, network. What we do in ESPA is that we work through our technical committees, we get feedback from uh, the port experts, and we come up with uh, evidence-based uh, policy recommendations. Um, what is important when we talk about ports is to take into account that ports are very close to the local communities. 90% of the European ports are located either within or uh, very close to urban areas. And um, this is reflected in, in the European ports' priorities. Uh, this uh, table comes from an exercise we do every year. Uh, we collect data from our members and we come up um, with the environmental benchmarks of the European uh, port sector. You can see there that uh, the relationship with the local community in, in, is in position four, um, but what reflects uh, the, the strong relationship with the local community is that air quality comes first since uh, 2013. Climate-related energy consumption comes second uh, since 2013. And uh, last year, um, climate change uh, made it for the first time and then climbed in position seven. Uh, in 2018. Marine litter, uh, ship waste and garbage uh, port waste are also among the, the top 10 priorities and of course in position three, uh, noise. And here you can see the historic development of uh, the different uh, priorities. It is an exercise we do uh, per periodically since 1996 and we decided to do it uh, annually since uh, 2016. We publish our environmental report um, in September, uh, and we're, we're going to make it this year as well. Um, you can see here in this, on this slide that um, why is important climate. It's not only about reducing the emissions of the transport sector or uh, the land-based activities, um, the industry that uh, is located uh, in port areas. And I have to say that um, uh, uh, that some, uh, some ports are responsible for a large part of the emissions generated uh, at national level. Uh, and uh, the, if, if you see, for example, the port of Rotterdam, uh, there is a huge industrial cluster located in the port area. And the industries that are located in the port area are responsible for 20% of, uh, of the Dutch greenhouse gas emissions. Of course, the port is not responsible for all these emissions. But uh, the port role is also to facilitate uh, often the transition of uh, land-based industries uh, to a carbon, to a zero carbon future. 38% um, of the European port authorities are directly or indirectly engaged in the production of renewable energy. Uh, this is important not only for the generation, uh, for the production of renewable energy um, for the cities, it's also important in the context of the debate about the future fuels for shipping. We're going to need a lot of renewable, uh, renewable electricity for the production of shipping fuels, such as synthetic fuels. Um, nobody, of course, knows what is the silver bullet for shipping, but among the solutions discussed, currently discussed are also synthetic fuels, biofuels, hydrogen, ammonia. Um, Certainly, we're going we're gonna to need a lot of renewable electricity and ports already contribute um, to the achievement of the climate targets, the European climate targets. At European level, in, uh, in ESPO, um, we run uh, the EcoPorts Network, which is a project, a 22-year-old project. Um, it brings together more than 100 uh, European ports, and the flagship of, 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 the, of the initiative, of the network, is uh, the only port-specific environmental standard in, in the market, uh, the PERS. And I'm happy to say that uh, more than one-third uh, one of the EcoPorts members 
uh, have been already certified uh, with the Paris Environmental Standards. Apart from Paris, uh, you can see that 53% of the ports are also certified with ISO 14001. It is important because it's, it, it makes sure that um, um, there is in place uh, a robust environmental management uh, scheme. In our environmental report, we measure also different indicators, how much uh, better or worse ports, ports do uh, every year. Um, you can see on this slide that uh, waste, for example, monitoring of waste has gone up by 17% since uh, 2013. But it's, all, it's, it's not only an exercise we do to just to communicate the progress we do. Of course, <laughs> one of our tasks is to communicate to the policymakers what we do every year. But we also measure uh, which indicators, uh, which uh, environmental um, benchmarks go down and what we need to do better. Um, for example, you can see that um, carbon footprint has been uh, stable since uh, 2013, and it's one of the issues we discuss in our technical committees. Uh, what is important for uh, shipping and what we do uh, to contribute to, um, to, to, to make shipping greener is first of all the infrastructure. Uh, ports are mainly responsible uh, for the infrastructure to make sure that um, infrastructure which is necessary for shipping uh, is available in the port. 51% uh, uh, of the ports uh, provide with onshore power supply. Uh, what is probably more relevant for ocean going ships is uh, the benchmark for uh, low voltage and 42% uh, of European ports provide it with high voltage shore side electricity in 2018. Um, it is important to say there that um, we need a level playing field when it comes to shore side electricity. Um, taxation and uh, different kinds of levies are applied on the electricity price. Um, as you may be aware, the marine fuel is a tax exempt and uh, it is often um, difficult to compete uh, with uh, the marine fuel. The, and what we have been uh, arguing at European level is that we need a tax exemption, a permanent tax exemption, exemption for electricity that is provided um, to ships at birth. What is important when it comes to shoreside electricity? Experts say that electricity may be also one of the solutions for uh, at least one segment of shipping in the context of the decarbonization debate, at least for short, uh, for short sea shipping and, uh, and ferries. Uh, more than half uh, of the European ports provide also with incentive schemes, differentiated port fees, um, in order to reward the front runners, um, the ships that go beyond regulation. Uh, I have to say there that uh, these incentive schemes mainly aim to reward the front runners and to give them good market reputation. Of course, we know that. Uh, port incentive scheme, schemes cannot change uh, by themselves investment decisions of the ship owners. Over the course of the three, four uh, last years, we have seen very positive developments, the adoption of the Paris Agreement, the introduction of the 0 0.5 sulfur limit uh, at international level, and last year's decision of the IMO uh, to make a commitment to reduce shipping emissions at least by 50% by 2050. Um, we have in place emission control areas um, in, in America, in the US and the uh, Canadian coastline and in Europe in the Baltic and the North Sea. A new debate has started about um, SECA and NECA in the Mediterranean. We're following very, very closely all these uh, developments. Um, under the Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Directive, the European Directive, um, um, uh, which incentivizes and um, makes um, uh, mandatory the development of different um, fuels. Um, ports and, in fact, member states got a mandate to uh, build and develop suffic a sufficient number of LNG um, uh, refueling points uh, across the EU and with a priority 
in the major ports, the members of the TNT core network, and uh, a similar ma ma mandate exists for the development of source-site electricity, uh, with a priority again um, uh, with the ports of the major net network, the TNT core network, but in all EU ports uh, by 2025. So as I said before, the difficulty there is the price differential between the electricity price and the marine fuel. For ports, the main challenge is uh, to make sure that the infrastructure is available, that future fuels will be available in the port, that technical challenges will be proper, properly uh, addressed. Uh, many recent studies have found that there are a lot of technical difficulties or challenges uh, when it comes to storage and bunkering of, uh, of alternative fuels or future fuels like ammonia or hydrogen. Uh, we have also to make sure that um, renewable energy is available for the production of uh, future fuels for shipping and that policy barriers such as uh, high taxation for source, source, source site electricity and policy uh, incoherence um, is addressed. For us, it's a, is a, is, is, is a priority, a big priority to make sure that in, in the debate uh, for the decarbonization of shipping, um, we don't take into account only um, the carbon savings of future fuels. We have also to take into account uh, the public health benefits future fuels have not only how much emissions, CO2 emissions um, reduce, but um, we have also taken into account uh, NOx, SOx, and PM emissions. We published recently our priorities for the period 2019-2024 for the new European Parliament and the new uh, European Commission. It is a priority when it comes to the use of infrastructure um, to make also sure or to, to discuss Similar, uh, similar measures for, uh, for, the for the users of the infrastructure. Um, and as sports, um, we support um, the start of a discussion for an EU-wide uh, emission control uh, area in close cooperation uh, with all stakeholders. And I will conclude uh, my presentation by making a short comment about the investment needs of the European ports. You can see on this slide that the main drivers behind the investment decisions of the ports are decarbonization and mitigation of pollution. Um, we did this exercise, we commissioned an independent study which found that the investment needs of European ports for the next 10 years will be 48 uh, billion uh, euros. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, I would be very happy to participate in the panel discussion and answer to any questions. Thank you.